Okie dokie. Welcome back to Nickelodeon. This comic corner classic that's non-classic. This is episode number 1386 and double shot number 1280. I have two Doctor Strange trades again. Yep. First up we have the second and final volume for Doctor Strange and the Sorcerer Supreme. This is time after time. Yep. This book collects the last six issues of this very brief ongoing series. Yep. Of course, written by Robbie Thompson. Yeah, there's a bunch of artists in here, too. You have artwork by Howard Regas. Those are the first three issues in here. The last three issues are by Nathan Stockman. The cover art is by Howard Rodriguez and Avil, uh, Avinil Lapuk. I think it's pronounced the person's name. I'm sorry for mispronouncing your name, but it's kind of difficult, especially when it's written in cursive. Yeah. Uh, who's actually the inker for the first three issues of this book. Yep. Publishing here. Yep, this pretty much deals with Doctor Strange and the sorcery fighting this guy here, who was introduced toward the end of the book. And after he's beaten, of course, everybody goes back to their own separate things. And this storyline kind of wraps up with issue number nine, and then the last few issues is simply just Doctor Strange sending his pretty much his counterparts back to their own time period though Kenya the one who's Native American she actually stays in present day she's the only who says we can have returning back to the future where he's there married with Hulkling and, he's, and they have a kid together yes my only guess is the reason why this is able to happen because Hulkling's a shapeshifter yep but in the case of the series overall it's not that bad of a series per se and by the time he gets to the last issue you're probably like yeah, this is a good place for it to stop. As a matter of fact, the book has it where it kind of was introduced to Zelina, the one who's Dr. Trange's librarian. Yep. But as for the end of this book, it's not bad. This book roughly a 9 out of 10. Final thoughts on this very brief series of Dr. Strange. Yeah, this is a spin-off series for Dr. Strange. My only guess is because Dr. Strange's book was selling so well, they just had to do a spin-off book for him. And this was the book. Not very long, mind you, only 12 issues. My only guess is because this is my personal theory. I don't think the series was canceled low sales. That was not the issue. I think this is probably as far as Robert Thomas would want to take the book. So 12 issues is probably a good number to end that main spinoff series. It's not like it's going to be a long running series where it's going to pass the main series. Yep, but that's the end of this brief, brief series. Only 12 issues. And these are the trades. It's a pretty fun series. Alright, next up is the last trade for Doctor Strange. Well, for the recent era of Doctor Strange. Mostly anyway, so this is a one miniseries I haven't covered yet. Though it's for the ongoing series, yeah, this is the last one. And it's also the final trade of Mark Waid's where We have Doctor Strange, Surgeon Supreme, Volume 1, Under the Knife. This collects the first, well, pretty much the entire six issue run for this book. Now you're probably thinking, why why only six issues? Did the series get cancelled? Yes, it was cancelled last year due to the pandemic. Yep, what a many titles. This is by far the only one that was actually a long running title that ended because everything else had just started the previous year. Yeah, like everything else ended last year was pretty much series that started last year. This technically was a relaunch of the Doctor Strange title, though it's simply Doctor, because he's basically a surgeon again, he's, he's a neurosurgeon. And anybody probably noticed, like, almost any other title got canceled last year. Either got canceled either in issue 6 or 10. Yeah, that's simply put what the issues were into that. Now, the story for this one is that Doctor Strange is uncovering some magical stuff in a hospital. Yes, because he is now a surgeon again, first time since the 1960s. He's still, he's still, he's still a source of supreme. He's basically the surgeon supreme now, and he also run, finds out that the that the the chief of staff of the hospital is none other than Doctor Drood. Yes, Doctor Drew. Which Doctor Strange is like, wait, he's dead. He's been dead for years. Yeah, he died back in the nineties, but he was brought back in Chaos War. Yep, brought back in Chaos War. Oh, one of the many plot threads that actually is set up in these issues that is never followed on due to the, due to the abrupt ending of the series. 
Doctor Strange finding out, like, how the heck is Doctor Drude even alive? Also, the way the artist draws it, it's almost like they pretty much gave Doctor Drude a makeover. Yeah, this is Doctor Drude. Yeah, that's him. Though, here's the thing, though. If you look at any picture of the guy... Let's see if I can look him up here. It is quite interesting what this guy actually really looks like here. Let's see if I can find him here. Let's see. Yeah, this guy made his debut just a few short years before Doctor Strange. Yeah. His attire was actually a lot different than that. I mean, here he is. Yeah, that's Dr. Drew. That's what he used to look like. Yeah, he dressed this way for years. He did mention the book that he actually had retired from being a superhero, which... Okay, so... Not a bad idea. He says he went back to basically was before he became a, a, a superhero. A psychiatrist. Okay, kind of similar to what Doctor Strange is doing, though he still is still being the regular Doctor Strange, everyone knows. Yeah, still the Source Supreme. Oddly enough, if you like the weird thing about these issues, there's no there's barely any appearances of the Sink of St. Torn because that was frequently shown a lot in previous books. This book, it's almost like the way that Mark Way was writing this book, by the way, he actually co he actually was not the sole writer of these issues. No, he brought on a co-writer for some strange reason. He brought on Kev Walker. I believe this guy is Yeah, he, he I think he's the artist of these issues. The cover is quite interesting. This cover right here, that's Phil Noto. Yes, who does the first issue plus issues three through six. Max Ferrua does issue number two. I believe that's Max Ferrua's hot work. And also have an explosion in the hospital thanks to Doctor Strange actually come across a like extra dimensional like creature that deals with magic. But there's also this little kid who basically uh, apparently knows all about Doctor Strange. And the final issue kind of sets up the Strange Academy series. Yes, it does. How does it up? Well, the school gets started. Where he mentioned that he started school with Dr. Drood. And he says he's bringing like Dr. Voodoo. Zalinda's going to work as a teacher of the school. Which is great. But sad this is the end of the book. Yep. Overall great book. Love it. Also the appearance by Madam Mask in here. Yes. Why is she here? Well this is probably Mark Way doing a loose fall up to the first story. I can probably make This is Iron Man Run. Which Dr. Strange made a guest appearance in. Yep. I gotta say, pretty good book. Give this book roughly a 9.5 out of 10. Yeah, and I've pretty much almost forgotten about a book. I mean, a lot of people probably thought the book probably ended, like, end of 2019. No, it got restarted. As this. Though, sadly, because of the pandemic, we had to end the series. Though it's released as Doctor Strange Church of Supreme number one, volume one, but this is the only one. As for my final thoughts on this entire run, that started back in 2015. Yes, five years, two relaunches, a renumbering to jump with this numbering. A lot happened in five years. Yeah. First, we had the Jason Aaron run, which is collecting these four trades here. Oh, and I did look it up though. How long ago did I review this trade? Two years ago. That is pretty much the start of reviewing Doctor Strange, the current era. Two years ago, I started this. And now, I finished it. Well, here is basically Jason Aaron's run. His very awesome run, mind you. Yes, also, when I was basically reading this, when it was coming out uh, several years ago, like, after at the end of the first year of the book, which was in 2016 at Comic-Con, like, I was speaking to one of the uh, people at Comic-Con I went to, he was quite surprised that the book was actually selling really well. Yes, for a book that basically not published ongoing in like 20 years. Yeah, last to publish ongoing back in the 90s. Yeah, the 90s. Yeah, this one here is the brief run. Like, 
Yes, the mission's been done by Dennis Hopeless and a couple issues done by John Barber. Yep, though you can kind of say this basically loosely set up basically what happened in the pages of Daredevil with Doc with Kingpin becoming the mayor of New York. And then he had right after that the two trade brief run of Dan of Donnie Cotis in the book. Yeah, this was an awesome run. Yeah. Not very tall. I thought this one was a bit longer than it was because I, I remember like four hundred coming out. Like and it was quite strange though. When this was re restarted re triple digit numbering four years ago, and they decided to go with numbering from volume one, which basically was a continuation of Doctor Strange numbering from Strange Tales, the book he made his debut in. Yeah. Though the thing was basically, they had, I thought it was quite interesting though that it was an issue, it was a one issue amazing experiment that actually was a tie into this. Yes, that first story, God of Magic, which was really good. And then you have finally the brief run, the the little bit longer run of Mark Wade. Yep, collected in five trades. Yep, this here is Mark Wade's entire run. This one is across the universe, Remittance, Harold, which is, was a really good storyline, and of course you had this book that shows I reviewed this recently. And finally, the book just reviewed this episode. Yep. But in the case of Doctor Strange, over the course of the past five years, has been really good. Yeah, even though it ended last year, and like, just by sheer coincidence, the final issue came out one year ago this month. Yeah, the final issue of this was one year ago. And yes, I will get Strange Academy Volume 2 when it comes out, so expect to see a review of that in the future. But in the case, Doctor Strange basically is going to be more Doctor Strange reviews coming, basically it comes to Comic Corner. Yes. Yes, there'll be more. I One particular trade I really wanted to review, especially since I've heard a lot of good things about it, I want to review Doctor Strange The Oath, a mini-series that is very much had a lot of critical acclaim. I read it. it's actually a pretty good miniseries. I also plan to eventually review the the trades that collect stuff from the original classic era of Doctor Strange from the 60s and 70s by people like Steve Ditko, Roy Thomas, Gene Cullen, some of the artwork. Uh, like a lot, of, basically a lot of really good people working Doctor Strange. I really want to cover that era. I technically covered one trade that collect. I I, I, own, I think it was Doctor Strange Volume Three. I think it was. Year three or four, the one I owned when I reviewed, I got when I was up in South Carolina last year. So, I'm hoping to get a chance to read more of that era because it's just a really good era. Mm. Yeah. So, that's it for Circle View. Stay tuned for my next comic corner. We're discussing a Wonder Woman trade, the most recent one, and the first trade in a while. I'll discuss a Matt Fractions run for Iron Man. Okay, to the next video. Bye.